Alright, this is a little um a cat pulsing circuit that I came with I wanted I came up with I wanted to share. Um now actually I don't know, maybe someone else has came up with this before, I have no idea. And if they did, you know, I don't mean to take credit or anything, but um I didn't know about it. So this is basically a um a solid state uh cat pulser I came up with because I Basically, just to put it out there, I, I'm, I, I'm, I think I'm too stupid to understand uh, IC circuits and, uh, you know, stuff like that. Um, haven't really taken a good crack at the 555 uh, pulser. But, just to be honest, I didn't want to. It just seemed kind of complicated. But um, anyway, so what I did was I just came up with this simple way to pulse cats. And what... and it's not hooked up to a, a motor right now. I'm going to uh, implement this on a lot of motors, but I'm just I just got it laid out to demonstrate how it works. Um, you see, that's a, that's my relay came out of a computer, and um, I ripped it open so you can see the contact when it makes contact. I got a capacitor right here. Okay, the most important part is these LEDs. I'm using LEDs as my as my uh, timing mechanism. And uh, basically what I'm doing is, because I thought about it, and LEDs are pretty cool because um, you can put, they're basically a, a direct physical uh, line, but they won't light unless there's enough potential. So basically, like a lot of things, you know, you can put a battery to an LED, and it'll basically be shorting it, but it's not going to short it unless it's got enough uh, potential to light the, to, to bridge the junction. So anyway, I got a bunch of LEDs here in a string. And what I'm doing is I have my output on both sides of the LED string, negative and positive, so that they'll light up. But I'm tapping towards the middle section of LEDs. I'm tapping those, positive and negative, and running that into a little NP, or PN, excuse me, NPN transistor. You can see it down there. And I basically just ran the base one of the positive pins to the base and one of the negative to the base towards the middle of the string and what happens is there is and and the string is going into this capacitor so when this capacitor has reached enough voltage to fully light this string not fully light it but enough potential to reach from one end to the other that means my energy is going to be jumping through positive and negative which means these two taps in the middle are going to become energized at the right voltage at which point that sends a signal to this small NPN transistor into the base which causes it to switch which allows current to travel through it from my uh, input which is going to be a, a capacitor but right now it's just a battery for purpose for demonstration purposes and basically what that does is that signal pulses the uh, battery to the relay which makes the relay switch this capacitor which is charged also now my plan is to charge that capacitor in order for the timing through another route through an inductor and that will be charged through my back EMF uh, my main you know back EMF from the circuit which will go to wherever I want it to but I basically just wanted to demonstrate that so right here that's the voltage across my timing capacitor 18 volts this is the voltage across my other capacitor, you can't, uh, can't see it's about 18 volts also. But what I'm going to do first is just, I got this fan, the Dini fan, um, going, charging the capacitor for my timing. And I'm just going to run that for now so you can see how it operates. So I'm going to spin it up. Spin it up. You can see the voltage in the cat, the voltage in the cat rises. Once it gets to a certain voltage, it's going to switch that relay. And you, you can see it make contact as soon as it hits the right voltage. Now, now the LEDs, you can see they're lighting, but haven't quite bridged, haven't quite bridged that middle junction. And as soon as they do that, the relay is going to switch. And right now, my um, charging output is low. So I'm going to just turn it up and make it switch. I don't know if you can see that, but it just switched. It's going to happen again real quick. There it goes. You can see as the LEDs get 
brighter and brighter switch. There it goes. And as it's switching, it's dumping the charging capacitor so the cycle continues. If you don't dump the charging capacitor, then the relay won't switch back off. So you can see what's happening here. Maybe you can see the spark through the shadow as it as it switches. Okay, and you can see the cap, it charges up, gets to about 20 something, then discharges and, and continues. And this is all being timed by LEDs. If I want my timing to be longer, I just add a longer string of LEDs for a higher voltage potential that I want. If I want it shorter, I tap down the line for a shorter string. Now, I'm going to charge this capacitor too so that one becomes discharged. I'm just going to charge that one with this motor just because I don't have any other way. So that's charging up. You see it charge and discharge with the other one. Charging, discharging. So with this speed, it's going to discharge at about 50 volts. Now you can see the spark in there. Very simple. No ICs or anything. Can't see because the freaking shadow. So basically I can turn my output up to make the LEDs light faster and it'll switch faster. Oops. So now it's switching a little faster. So anyway, I thought that was a pretty good idea. Um, like I said, if, if somebody else came up with that, I apologize. That's all you, player. <laughs> but um, yeah, I thought this was pretty cool. Um, I'm going to use this as my uh, pulsing circuit for basically all my motors. Um, just because I feel like it's a lot easier. Um, now, if you don't quite, uh, now also I got a diode on here just to separate the two capacitors. But as you can see, they're not really separated. It still works all the same. I just don't have a load in this demonstration. I'm just shorting the capacitor into itself. But you get the idea. The end result would be that relay is going to pulse this cap into a battery of my choosing. And um, it's going to do it all on its own through these LED time. And these are three volt LEDs. So it's Basically, you can see I needed it about a 25 volt potential to bridge this string of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, so about 15, where I've got um, the, the middle four tapped. So that the, your, your middle tap potential also is a, big, is a big thing in the timing. But all this can be easily arranged just by attaching different wires. You don't need different resistors or whatever. So yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. If you don't um, quite get the gist of it, just let me know. I'll explain it. All right.